Hello, I'm Reverend Karen Davis of First Christian Church. On behalf of the Glendora Ministerial Association, I'd like to welcome you to this year's virtual baccalaureate service. We were uncertain if we'd be able to safely meet indoors in the event center, so once again this year, we are coming to you virtually. Along with the student representatives, we've chosen two scripture lessons that are our theme for this year from Psalm 71 and from Galatians 6, 9. As you listen today to the various speakers, I hope that you'll have the opportunity to reflect for yourself upon the joys and challenges these last 15 months have brought, and may you continue to be inspired by the fact that while we're not together in person, we are united in spirit and united in our prayers for each of you. Hi, my name is Evie. Uh, I think I introduced myself later on during the message. Um, but I'll be leading us into a short song of worship. I'm going to start praying right now, and then we'll get into it. Here we go. If you want to stand or um, sit or kneel or whatever posture that you want to take in worship, that would be awesome. Um, yeah, I'll bring us in there. opportunity to still have baccalaureate, um, even though it's virtual. Um, God, we just bless this video, and uh, we just declare that your hands are all over it, and that your spirit is um, within it, God, even though it's uh, only a video. Um, but yeah, Jesus, we just thank you so much for um, just showing us that even through videos, or even through Zoom, or even through virtual things, that you are still there, and you are still present, and you are still powerful, God. Um, yeah, we just pray that this worship time must be a really good time. Um, to praise your name and just to declare, great are you, Lord, as um, you have shown yourself to just be so great and so amazing and so loving, even through all the chaos um, and just craziness that happened this year. Uh, so yeah, God, we pray that we will just be able to have a really good worship time um, that will bless our hearts and our spirits.
Psalm 71, verse 5. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Galatians 6, verse 9. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we do not give up. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. For the past four years, I have lived by this strong and guiding hope that is spoken of in the Bible, verse 71, 15. I have lived trusting in the Lord and praying that he will get me through my darkest nights and my brightest days. I have relied on my Catholic group, my church, and my leaders to help me replenish my faith day after day. Going off to college for some may seem like an exciting new journey that we students get to choose the path of with new friends, new classes, and for some new cities, this truly will be the time of our lives. But for many others, this time can be frightening and can bring many anxieties of the unknown. You may feel the worry of not knowing what is to come and if you will be able to survive it. But for both of these kinds of students, I ask that you may continue to live by this guiding hope and remember that our Lord will be and has always been with us. Reach out to your church community Find those in your new lives who share your faith and values, but most importantly, rely on the Lord. The Lord is your hope and your trust. He will be there for you at the start of this new journey and continue to stay by your side along this windy path. Reading his words will nourish your soul and praying to him will cure your anxieties. Remember how long ago it felt to walk onto campus and wonder what being a high schooler would bring. Use that sense of confidence you feel now as a senior in high school to walk along with the Lord for the next four. We can do this together with the Lord. So I speak this verse to you all again and hope that you may remember these words for the years to come. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Congratulations for a grand accomplishment as you approach a wonderful transition in life. Moving into adulthood can take many by surprise, but when prepared, great joys will be discovered. You have earned a moniker that most would care not to have, the first senior class to endure a complete school year during a pandemic. While this may have brought forth unanticipated struggles, it has offered you an experience early in life that will strengthen you and give you hope for years to come. Christians are a people of hope, a people who recognize that through the cross has revealed the resurrection. I am encouraged by both the psalm and the scriptural passage that you have chosen as your theme. The great hope and trust in the Lord shared by David in Psalm 71 verse 5 exemplifies the great courage and faith that will guide you in the difficult times, especially when you surrender fully to God's presence when you are young. For you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. St. Paul's admonition to the Galatians to not get tired of doing what is good wherein they will reap a harvest of blessing if they don't give up, gives life. When one recognizes they are created in the image and likeness of God, and from him flows the dignity in which they are created, the awareness of God's call to be good is apparent. Jesus said, Be perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect. You have been created in perfection. You are called to excellence. Well, none of us will be perfect today, placing your hope and trust in the Lord coupled with acting out in the goodness in which you've been created, will bring forth unimaginable journey through life. A journey that similarly mirrors that of the disciples on the road to Emmaus, who said, did not our hearts burn within us when he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? My friends, once again, congratulations. Know that you remain in my prayers and that you have the support of the St. Dorothy community. God bless you.
Hello, graduates. I'm really honored to be able to share with you today, and especially because you picked one of my favorite verses in Scripture, Galatians 6, 9. It says, Do not grow weary in well-doing, for in due time you will reap a harvest of good. The verse reminds me of one of my favorite stories. It goes all the way back to 1992. In Barcelona, it was Olympic Games. There was a runner from Great Britain named Derek Redmond. He was the favorite to win the 400 meter. As he was coming in the last lap, he pulled a hamstring, but rather than collapsing to the ground, he continued to limp towards the finish line. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a man came running out of the stands. Security tried to stop him, but he kept pressing forward. He came alongside Derek and came under his arm and helped him reach the finish line. That was his father. The stands went crazy, standing ovation. Thousands and thousands of people, and it became an iconic scene. When I think about that perseverance of how Derek crossed the finish line, it was because his father came alongside him. You are crossing the finish line, and I want to congratulate you. But I want to remind you, as you move ahead in the days, in the future, that you can persevere. If you remember that your Heavenly Father loves you and wants to come alongside you, because he is the one that will give you strength to persevere. And just as the verse promised, when you do that, when you don't grow weary in well-doing, you will reap a harvest of good. Congratulations and blessings on you. Hi guys, I'm Jack, this is Ben, and we're here to share a few thoughts with you at Baccalaureate. Uh, we wish we could be with you in person, but as we know, this year has been crazy. Uh, a lot of things have been canceled, like sports have been canceled, schools have been canceled, churches have been canceled, and even weird things like you have to say hi to your grandparents from the sidewalk and you can't even go into their houses. Exactly. I've had those experiences this whole time as well, Ben. Um, and we're just coming to a time where we know that uh, Jesus loves us no matter what. This situation is all orchestrated by Jesus, and he has a whole plan for us. God is working miracles right now. And uh, we're going to come into Psalm 71.5 right now. Um, and it says, uh, for you give me confidence, O Lord. O Lord, I have trusted in you since I was young. Uh, so ever since my youth, I've been taught to, like Jack just said, trust in, trust in God. And uh, even through this pandemic, that doesn't change. We still need to trust in God and uh, know that he loves us. And so one thing about Jack and I is that we really love to play basketball. And some days you're on fire. You're hitting all the shots. You're getting all the steals on defense. You're doing everything right. And other days, you're not feeling it. You feel like you are garbage. And you're missing all the shots, you're turning the ball over, you can to the team. Um, one thing our coach always says is don't get discouraged, keep your head up, and just win the ball back on defense. Exactly, and during this time, we can totally um, contribute that and uh, align that with life. We can say that we're gonna have bad days in life, we're gonna have rough patches, we're gonna be just really torn down, but we know that Jesus loves us, God loves us. We will always have them in our backcourt in a way, um, and we will always be just at their forefront of their minds. Um, and we're gonna attribute this to also Galatians 6, 9, and it says, um, so we must not grow weary in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not give up. So Paul's message to the Galatians is our message to you. We've seen all the good that you guys have done in the community, at school, and in your own homes. And we wish that you continue that good wherever you may be past high school. Hey students, Josh Linden here from Glen Kirk Church, and I'm here to say congratulations. Uh, we are so proud of all of the hard work that you've been able to do over the last year, because I know, much like last year, this one probably hasn't been the easiest, and yet you're here. You've continued to achieve academically and persevere through uh, what might be a really challenging school year. And so congratulations. Uh, I also really like the theme verses that you've chosen for this year's baccalaureate celebration. Uh, Galatians 6, 9 says, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Now, you might not know that Galatians was written to a church that was facing persecution, facing trials and hardships because of what they believed. And in some ways, it might seem pretty familiar with how we were facing a lot of difficulties and, and just hardships throughout the year. And yet I love what Paul says here. He says that blessing is worth it if we continue 
to do good, if we continue to not give up. And so that's my encouragement and my challenge for you is that you continue to find ways to do good, continue to find ways that to not give up, okay? Because we are so excited and so thankful for you and looking forward to all of the great things that you are going to do and accomplish in the years ahead. Class of 2021, there is so much about your graduation that is bright and joyful and hopeful. You are moving into your future and we congratulate you. Now, here's the thing about people older than you. We see you graduating and we see you as the future. And it can sometimes feel like we, we put a lot on your shoulders, that, that we expect a lot from you and even demand it sometimes. But we certainly do put a lot of our hope in you. You can be sure that our hope in you is built on substance. Our hope in you is built on your past performance and your current core values, your attitude, your behaviors. And it's in the way you envision the future. So yes, we do put our hope in you. It's not because we want you to fulfill some go back to the good old days kind of sentimental memory for us. No, we put our hope in you because we can see God in you. God acting in your lives right now. And our hope is that you will continue to allow God to be in your life and to let God form you and shape you all the days of your life. We can place our hope in you because of your actions and your choices, your creativity and your inventiveness, your breakthroughs and your day-to-day -day living. We've seen you stick it out through the pandemic, taking care of your family, friends, and neighbors as yourselves. You are full of compassion, and you realize that your choices about all sorts of things in life have higher stakes than just being about your life alone. So congratulations, and thank you for being the kind of people the rest of us can place our hope in for now and for the future. And thanks be to God that we can all have a center core of hope in Jesus Christ with the assurance and certainty of his love and grace, mercy and compassion for us all. Enjoy your graduation. Keep encouraging each other to continue to ground your choices and your creativity and your compassion in God's love for all of us. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in God so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi, my name is Evie Huang and I was the 2020 to 2021 Christian Club President and I would like to share a short message for you guys today. <laughs> Galatians 6, 9 through 10 says, Let us not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up. Right now, therefore, every time we get the chance, let us work for the benefit of all, starting with the people closest to us in the community of faith. Our senior year has been a lot. <laughs> like every other senior year, it held challenges, rewards, and surprises. But unlike other senior years, it all happened amidst a global pandemic that has forever changed the way we live life. Throughout the various things that have happened during our senior year, I feel like God has been trying to reveal something to me, the necessity for our generation of Christ followers to be atmosphere changers. In my high school years, my old youth pastor often said a kind of weird saying. <laughs> he said, be the thermostat, not the thermometer. He explained that a thermometer simply read the temperature of the room and told what was already happening. Alternatively, a thermostat had the power to change the temperature and change the way the room was. As children of God, we are called to follow in his footsteps, and Jesus was definitely a thermostat kind of person, especially when dealing with societies marginalized. When I reflect on Jesus' life and teachings, it always amazes me how much he emphasized the importance of reaching out to those neglected by society. Instead of simply agreeing with the religious leaders and reading the temperature of the room, he actively spread God's love in radical, empathetic ways and changed the temperature of the room himself. When the bleeding woman touched his robe, Jesus showed kindness and healed her, even though um, society deemed her unclean and lowly. When the woman at the well was curious about his story, he had a genuine loving conversation with her, even though they were from opposing ethnic groups and she had a more negative, negative reputation. 
In Romans, Paul advises the Roman church to offer their bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. They should not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of their minds. If we solely listen to what the world has to say, we will get too caught up in other people's opinions and words. We'll become thermometers, simply repeating and conforming to what the world is telling us. Instead, let us be transformed and renewed by Jesus and Holy Spirit. There are so many that are lost and think they are forgotten, so let us go into college and into the world as people on a mission to show them that God is still looking after them no matter what the world says. We are the class of 2021. <laughs> We are the next generation, the generation that has so much ahead of us, and so many new and unique opportunities to change the world that we live in. And I am hoping that we remember to love as Christ first loved us as we step into new places and new journeys. The need for Christian kindness and generosity has never been stronger in this world and in this country. There is brokenness everywhere people turn to, so let's give them a chance to turn to the one who holds everlasting light and life. Listen to Paul's words. Don't get tired of doing good starting with the community of Christ followers that we have around us. There is power in unity, and I encourage you all to find strong Christian community to use as fuel to shed light into a dark and broken world where many are thrown aside and forgotten. Be the thermostat, not the thermometer. I repeat myself. <laughs> Be the thermostat, not the thermometer. There is so much ahead of us, and I'm very excited to hear about all the amazing things you will be doing in the future. Happy graduation, and keep Paul's words and Jesus' actions close to your heart. Follow in Jesus' crazy, bold, temperature-changing example by acting justly, loving mercy, and walking humbly. I challenge you to ask God for the ways he is calling you to be an atmosphere changer and to let him transform you daily. Thank you. On behalf of the Glendora Ministerial Association, we'd like to thank you for joining us in this virtual baccalaureate service to the class of 2021. We know that you have great things ahead of you. We know that you will make a tremendous positive impact on the world. You have demonstrated over these last 15 months that not even a global pandemic could stop you. You've demonstrated through your perseverance that you never tire at doing what is right and what is good. You have demonstrated through your character, your creativity, and through all that you've accomplished that you have placed your hope and trust in those things that are steadfast. May God guide you, may God bless you, and go forth into the world to do great things.